But we began this week with a new report released by Kentucky's League of Women Voters, criticizing Frankfurt's legislative tactics and transparency. The report details how the loss of pre-filed bills, an increase in shell bills, some irregular committee schedules, and inconsistent access to past legislative records are four growing challenges that the group sees to citizens participating in the lawmaking process. It builds on a previous report the League released earlier uh, this time last year. We know that these practices are often aimed at efficiency, but they unintentionally exclude the voices of everyday Kentuckians. Leadership from both chambers had no comment on the report. Other challenges the group outlined in their previous report and expanded on in this one raise issues over holding bill readings before committee action, last minute committee substitutes, and floor votes that were immediately after committee action. So, Senator Bledsoe, I want to start with you here because the group is, is more criticizing Republican leadership on this end. Last year's report, there wasn't any real response to it. I spoke with uh, political science professor uh, uh, Stephen Voss, who, who said that some in leadership may not necessarily see this group as nonpartisan as they build themselves. Why have no particular uh, reaction to the support? Do they raise any, any uh, concerns of merit there to y'all? Well, I think there's always concerns for transparency, and as something as elected officials we want is more transparency. And sometimes that's the virtue of just the timeline and the schedule of trying to get things out during a session that's often busy. And sometimes that's a virtue of deals haven't been made and people are still working out some of the words or differences at different points at different times in that process. So, um, you know, the question of why something hasn't been done comes down to kind of leadership and how they want to organize meetings and whatnot. But I'm a, I'm a fan of transparency. And, you know, what's interesting, I think with AI, we might have some more flexibility than we've had before to have things and in, in notes being taken more quickly and more efficiencies being done. So maybe there'll be more coming up just because we have more options and tools. Senator Neal, uh, Democrats, whenever they were in the majority, this group says that some of these tactics were, were also used by, by the party. I mean, is it more a matter of which majority is, is, is in power at the time? Does the partisan label matter when it comes to, you know, how these tactics are used? Uh, I, I'll take issue with that. I think we've seen much more of that happening under the, uh, the Republican leadership piece. But I agree with what I just heard from my colleague uh, primarily. It's a very difficult process. Uh, there are things that happen that you don't anticipate. Um, you can head down one aisle and to get to where you're trying to go, you got to go down another one. So you, you have to navigate and you have to do these sorts of things. But I agree also with the fact that uh, we have to stop and take a look at that because transparency is key because that's what this system is about, is the input from the people. We just don't go off and just do what we want to do. It's about engagement, and that is probably one of the highest forms of engagement from the citizenry. So we have to, we have to fix that. I agree. I think it inhibits the ability for them to engage in a, in a uh, acceptable way in terms of what we do. To, we uh, create a challenge for that. You know, the other thing is I think more in the interim we're seeing committee chairs actually hear more bills or, or at least presumptive ideas. I think that is going better. You know, several committees yeah. have kind of rules that before they vote on something in session, they hear it in the interim. Yeah. And that is an idea. At least you know what legislators are talking about that I think is giving more, people are paying more attention to the interim than maybe they have before, which I think is a good thing too. Well, I'll tell you, you can take this thing to another level. I mean, I'm in the legislature and I can tell you that I get a little frustrated and my members get a little frustrated and I, on both sides, Al, if you really talk about it, about the subject matter that we get it soon enough, early enough, so that we can engage in a more uh, in-depth and, uh, uh, and educated you know, way. So. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's, I don't take it as intentional, you know, I think it's driven by what we do and the challenges we have internally. But I think uh, sometimes you got to balance the equities there and, and figure out because we should not compromise in that area. I want to, you know, touch on one thing that was pointed out in the report was the growing use of, of shell bills, which is, is basically placeholder legislation. You get a co committee substitute that, that kind of, you know, puts in a lot of the, the meat of what is being accomplished there. They can be very easily portrayed as something deceptive, although I've covered many myself that ended up being kind of non-consequential and even positive things, but we've also seen this occur with some controversial pieces of legislation. I mean, the group made this quote that I want to uh, address. The cost of efficiency becomes the erosion of public participation and transparency. Do you, do you agree with that take, or do you find issues with it? 
I mean, efficiency is a good thing, and we're all elected to represent the people. At some point, you say, you send me to Frankfurt, you send Senator Neal to Frankfurt, and we're going to do the best we can to represent you. We can't engage on every issue all the time. And yet, we're in, a, we're in a timeline, right? Session starts and begins at a certain time. We don't get to keep going for months. And so that timeline keeps some things pretty tight. And you have to deal with the timeline that you have. And so I, I think we all want to do our jobs the best way we can. And we want to re represent the people the best way we can. And I think as long as we do that with good intentions, we can have good policy. Well, uh, I, I, again, I can agree with that. However, we can, if you look at their suggestion with respect to that, what we can do, we can build in when we utilize a shell bill, because we control that process, and we can allow a time, a day or two, and uh, publish it to the public so that that engagement can take place, and we should open the door to that. So I think it's something we could fix, actually.